The bushland is quiet and all are sleeping. I came across this movie back in 2015, having no idea what it was. Dots and the Kangaroo. Ayo, those eyes though? Apparently Dot here was a bit of a thing for Australian children back in the early 80s. It was based off a book from Ethel Petley in 1899. God damn. It's a 1977 animated musical made for kids, production held by the Australian Film Commission. Now, I own this on DVD because, well, this is a very unique movie. It's basically the amazing world of Gumball before Gumball. Everything you see is animated on still drops of live action scenery. In many instances, they just have characters on actual footage, and... It's just so bizarre. The premise of the movie is very simple. After leaving her parents to do an errand for them, Dot becomes distracted chasing after a kangaroo mouse in the woods and falls. Yeah, this is what you're in for. Strap in. She meets a kangaroo who feeds her roots. These roots, the animals call the food of understanding, and Dot is now able to speak to them. And so they are off. The kangaroo is looking for her lost Joey, while Dot is trying to find her way back home. The rest of the movie is basically them looking for help while coming across other animals along the way as they just sing and dance. A lot. <laughs> The movie is clearly low budget and it shows, with its limited use of sound effects, voice acting, and especially animation. Oh my god, this animation. At times, it's somewhat passable, I guess, but so much of it comes off as rough and unpolished. But I really don't feel like I should critique it too hard, given the size of the budget it was given to begin with. Oh my god, 250k? Jesus, I thought this was made for only $10. They really love reusing stock footage as well. You're going to see repeated shots throughout the movie so many times. The pacing of the film is also very poor. It moves at a snail's pace, and there isn't much of a plot to go on. Sometimes it'll cut back to her father and friend looking for her, all distressed, but that's all really. Literally most of the movie is just songs. Ducks singing about themselves and the fear of swimming in the waters. Two kangaroo mice sing about their boyfriend swallowing a snake or something. What? There's the frog singing on top of an alligator for some reason. There's the two platypuses that I could barely understand. And, uh... And I'm certain that I won't get sick of these sick of saying clickety, clickety, click, click, clickety, clickety. Yeah, amazing performances, I know. Luckily, it's over. Oh, no, after it shows her father and mother just crying over Dot being lost, it just cuts right back to it. Get over there! Yeah! When it isn't doing random songs, we are getting moments between Dot and the kangaroo. Damn! Relax! It's implied that her Joey is forever lost, or possibly dead, so she looks after Dot as if it's her own child, which is sweet. I wish we could have had a better focus or pace to establish that some more, instead of having endless scenes of animals singing, but oh well. It's a movie made for kids, after all. What else happens in this movie besides seeing and hearing the same parts over and over again? Well, there's a couple of neat visual changes, I suppose. Like, they actually fade the light here to show a passage of time. Uh, I like how they made the dancing birds go into silhouettes here. That's cool, right? Oh right, the nightmare fuel part. See, people mainly remember this movie because of one sequence in the film, one that's haunted them ever since they were kids. They find shelter in a cave under the rain, and the kangaroo talks to Dot about how this cave used to home many tribes people, but they ran away in fear because of the bunyip. It is a monster that just randomly manifested to scare off men and animals alike, and a whole song is dedicated to it. Along with some very unnerving imagery. Seriously, I can see why little Australian kids would shit their pants of this. That's messed up! And they don't even bring it up ever again, it's just brushed aside. The song is... not too bad, actually, I guess? I don't know, I'm just freaking out over this. Oh yeah, check out this part. This is supposed to be the father and friend still looking for Dot, but look at how they're drawn. And notice the father character is drawn twice in the same scene? This is his friend, but when it cuts, the friend is drawn properly, and then the father has different clothing? It's like a different person from another team designed this entire sequence without reading any of the notes. To quote Angry Video Game Nerd, watching this movie is like driving an old car. You're always afraid it's gonna break down. Because wow, is it all over the place. For a climax, they come across Nagenia's campsite where they just dance around and have dingo dogs to guard them. When spotted, a high speed action chase scene happens. This whole scene is weirdly put together for sure, but hey, at least they tried? I'll always give them the effort points. <laughs> <laughs> wow, 
What follows is her being injured, and birds give Dot advice on how to tend to her wounds. It's probably the sweetest moment of the movie, which I actually didn't mind too much. If only we had more scenes like this. At the end, she finally makes it home after coming across a friendly bird who... No, don't play that song again. Everyone knows me. I'm Willy Wagtail. That is not your voice. What the hell happened? What follows is the second reason why people remember this movie. Yes, besides that. The ending. Dot wants to show her parents to Kangaroo, but she refuses, saying that these are Dot's grounds and that she needs to return home. After Dot tells her to wait, it shows her crying, then she leaves. When Dot does come back, the bird tells her that she left. And then... Ah, Dot, please don't be sad. Your Kangaroo must have her freedom. Must live her own life. She's going home. And her home is the bush. Kangaroo must have her freedom. Freedom, 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 freedom. Hey yo, what is this? The voice fades away back into chirping. She lost the ability to hear them talk. Why am I getting chills? Then we have Dot sobbing, calling out for the kangaroo as she fades away into live action footage. fuck is this ending? And yes, this is how it ends. The parents don't ever come back to comfort her, and we don't see any more dancing, singing animals. Nope, screw that. This is how we're ending it. This is reality, kids. Sorry, you can't bring your kangaroo friends to your house. They belong in the wild, bitch. The end. Roll credits. Like, I... I just... What do I say about this? I had forgotten about this movie's existence for a while now, but it recently resurfaced back into my mind. Seeing it again after all these years just confirms to me how strange it really is. It's certainly one of the most unique animated movies I have ever seen, but I feel like it's something that is more interesting to see rather than it is to actually sit down and enjoy. Even if you do end up liking the musical segments unironically, there is simply no structure to them whatsoever. A song can start or end when it pleases, and there is quite a few sections of the movie where it does become quite a bore. There is elements I do like though, as I mentioned, the scene where Dot heals the kangaroo after some time. And the ending, as extremely twisted as it is, I did like the idea that they were going with, that all this could have just been Dot's childlike imagination. And the low budget animation all throughout the movie is charming at times. It's just, ugh, I don't know man. I wanted to make this video just to showcase this movie to light, and if you guys want to check it out for yourselves, the entire movie is up for free on YouTube. And there is other Dot movies made as well. Another one is Dot and the Bunny, but I don't think I can see more of it, honestly. Dot and the Kangaroo is certainly a movie, all right. One that I'll remember for a while to come. When you come